Thank you for making Locked On Yankees your first listen every day. We're free and available on all platforms. Today's show is a crossover with Locked On Blue Jays. Now, I will tell you that they are not on YouTube yet, so it's going to be audio with a backdrop, just in case you were wondering about that. But we had a very nice conversation. Uh, Lucas Weiss and Jen Smith are the co-hosts of Locked On Blue Jays, so you'll hear from them. We talk about the Yankees. We talk about the Blue Jays. We talk about Garrett Cole losing to Robbie Ray in the Cy Young race. We have my thoughts about Justin Verlander re-signing with the Astros, and oh, it's just a pleasant conversation, and I hope you enjoy it. You are Locked On Yankees, your daily New York Yankees podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Happy Thursday, everyone. My name is Stacey Gotsoulias. I'm the host of Locked On Yankees. Well, one of them. And today's episode is a crossover with Locked On Blue Jays. As I said, we had a fun conversation about lots of different things, including what the future of the rivalry between the Jays and Yankees will look like in the next couple of years. I think the Blue Jays will definitely build upon their performance in 2021 and I say that during the conversation, you'll hear it. But before I play the conversation for you, you can listen to us in Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, Odyssey, Spotify, Stitcher. You can subscribe on YouTube. You can watch us on YouTube, like, comment, do all that good stuff. And when you get into your car, you can tell your smart device to play podcast Locked on Yankees. So here is part one of my conversation with Lucas Weiss and Jen Smith of Locked on Blue Jays. Start off by because obviously as we're recording this, it's been an interesting day to be a Yankees fan. Garrett Cole doesn't win, Cy Young, Robbie Ray does the Toronto Blue Jays, which is you know obviously great for the Blue Jays. But mm -hmm. Justin Verlander, who of course the Yankees apparently made an offer to, and apparently some you know tw Twitter accounts wanted to show his you know him in, in a Yankees uniform prematurely is going to back to the Houston Astros. So just your thoughts on the day's events. Garrett Cole falling just short of the Cy Young and then Justin Verlander uh, no longer going to the Yankees. I didn't want Verlander, so I'm actually happy right now. Um, you know, the Yankees have tried too many times with reclamation projects. I know it's Justin Verlander. I know that he has a pedigree. He's a world champion. He's a Cy Young winner, but he's coming off Tommy John. He hasn't pitched since early 2020. He's 38. He has a ton of innings on that arm that is now surgically repaired with Tommy John. And if you've read Jeff Passan's The Arm and you didn't know how Tommy John surgery was done before you read that book, you're just amazed that people's elbows don't fall off. Um, as for Cole, I wasn't expecting it. Um, you know, Robbie Ray was my pick to win it. Um, and good for him in his tight pants. Good for you guys, you know, <laughs> and it just shows you how tough the AL East was this year with the fact that you guys have two MVP finalists and the Cy Young winner and still couldn't make the playoffs because the AL East was so insane. Aside from the poor Orioles who were way in the basement, but yeah, it's, it's, it was a very odd 2021. <laughs> no doubt. And I think we're we're seeing a bit of a trend of this probably going to happen in the next few years, right? Where you have four teams really in that mix, you know, garbled together, you know, you know, and trying to to compete for a playoff spot. And and look, Jen and I have talked about on episodes of our podcast that the Blue Jays are one of the best teams, maybe in baseball history, to never make the playoffs. Right, ninety-one wins. Mm -hmm. The caliber of players that they have that had incredible seasons. I mean, you mentioned, of course, Vladdy Guerrero, Marcus Semyon being in the top three in MVP uh, voting. But I'm curious your thoughts on the Yankees 2021 season because they make the playoffs. There's excitement. They have, they have a great, of course, final series against the Blue Jays. But then they lose to the Red Sox in the wild card game. And it just felt like that was a little bit of a, a microcosm, if you will, of the roller coaster. That was the 2021 Yankees season. That's exactly what it was. It was a roller coaster. It was one of, and it's funny because, you know, you have some Yankee fans who were being a little 
I don't know. They were exaggerating uh, during the season saying, this is one of the worst teams I've seen in 50 years, which uh, if they were, they wouldn't have made the playoffs. Um, but it was just so frustrating because they just couldn't get on. They got on the roll during the 13 game winning streak. Yes. But then right after that, they went right. I mean, it was literally just the worst gig. It was like a giga coaster. It wasn't even a regular roller coaster. It was a <laughs> roller coaster with a 300 meter drop. I mean, just boo. Yeah, it was not fun. Um, it was frustrating. It wasn't fun. It was annoying because it was the one season where judge and Stanton played over 140 games. They actually stayed healthy. The one thing that everyone was worried about coming into 2021 actually didn't need to be worried about. And it was guys not playing up to their potential. Aaron Boone managing as if he hasn't managed the previous three seasons and making odd lineup choices when they have chances to sweep series and strange bullpen decisions. And I would say Aaron Boone cost them at least six games, at least six games. And that was just frustrating to watch. And just so many things went wrong. The roster wasn't strong enough to recover from it. But the fact that they still won 92 games is kind of amazing considering how tough the AL East was. There are a lot of parallels, I think, between the Yankees season and the Blue Jays season, especially from a fan perspective, right? Mm -hmm. You talk about that roller coaster ride. You know, there was so much disappointment amongst Jays fans early in the season to the point that a lot of Jays fans were calling on the team to be sellers at the trade deadline, right? Which I'm not quite sure where that exactly was coming from. And, you know, then they, they get hot. They go on this run. They actually, you know, it literally came down to the final day of the season to determine who would actually make the playoffs. So, you know, I'm wondering from for Yankees fans, who aside from the obvious really stood out to you in 2021 and what went wrong? Aroldis Chapman started off unhittable for the first month and a half he just no one could get anything done against him and then all of a sudden it was like as good as he was he became bad it wasn't even a slight fall off he just fell off a cliff um you know the bullpen had issues um Glaber Torres Gary Sanchez I mean there was a whole bunch of things again the guys that you expected <laughs> to make it a rough season for the Yankees actually did well. I mean, judge was an MVP in the MVP running and had a really good season. Stanton had 19 home runs in August, September, and October. Um, it was just, yeah, I, I predicted they were going to win 95 if everything went right. Mm -hmm. That was my prediction. And some people were thinking, no way. They won 92 with a lot of things going wrong. So when a Yankee fan thinks about, well, what if this went right? What if this went right? They could have won at least seven games and maybe would have been right up with the Rays. It was just such a, a strange season for a lot of teams. And I feel like there may be some sort of carryover from 2020, yeah. you know, and we saw it in the playoffs. I mean, it was amazing to me that no one lasted, you know, a lot of these starters, if they lasted five, it was a miracle, <laughs> you know, because everyone just got so tired toward the end. It was like, wow. And when I think about that and think about the Blue Jays and the Red Sox and the teams that didn't make it as far or didn't make it into the playoffs, what would have happened to them if they had made the playoffs? Would it have been the same sort of thing for them too? So it's just interesting to think about the what ifs for a lot of the teams actually in 2021. Well, and Jays fans have been going through the same thing, right? What if Marcus Simeon had made this throw to first? And what if, you know, Brad Hand had not pitched any innings for this team? And or what if Rob Ray won that start against the Yankees the last week of the season? Because yes. if they had swept, they're swept. If they had won two out of three instead of losing two out of three, and the Yankees had the crappy weekend they had against the Rays, then there would have been, it would have been completely different. Absolutely. And, you know? and, you know, from a Jace, you know, fan perspective, like I was at one of those three games and losing two out of three really felt like, you know, that was sort of the end, right? Like it was, they would have to absolutely 
scratch and claw their way into the playoffs from there. Probably the flip side from a Yankees fan perspective, it felt like, you know, all right, here we are, bring it on. Yeah. And it was like, oh, all we have to do is win one. Then they lose the first two and we're thinking, oh my God, here we go. It's going to be a four-way tie. <laughs> Just right. with the way the whole season went. It was, maximum it maximum like it was heading chaos. <laughs> yeah. You know, you, uh, you brought up Aaron Boone and, you know, a lot of Jays fans, there has been this narrative that Charlie Montoyo has, you know, cost the team wins and, you know, isn't suitable to be the manager. What are Yankees fans saying about the fact that Aaron Boone was re-signed to a three-year contract? Yeah, well, if anyone listened to my show, I bitched about it for, I think, five days straight. Um, <laughs> not the entire show, but I would bring it up. Um, oh, boy. The thing that drives me crazy about the front office and the ownership is they keep saying they want to win. They want to do things to help the Yankees win. And then they bring Aaron Boone back. And as I said earlier, he, he wasn't the sole reason, mm -hmm. but there were a lot of silly decisions that he made that kind of, you know, made it so the Yankees would lose those games. And yeah, it was definitely at least five or six games that he cost them. And I was really, I was, there was part of me and I can't believe I'm going to say this. I'll admit it. I was kind of hoping they would make the playoffs. So then they'd have a real excuse to fire. I like did not re-sign him. And when they made the wild card game, I knew they were going to re up. They were going to re up him. So I wasn't happy about it. Some Yankee fans, you know, like Boone. Um, I don't know after this, how, after watching this season, you could possibly, he's a nice guy and I'm sure that the players love him because he's a player's kind of manager, you know, um, you know, I know the, a lot of the players respect him and stuff, but his in-game decision-making just drives me up a wall and I, 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 I cannot handle three more years of it. If it's going <laughs> to result in seasons similar to 2021. <laughs> Does anyone else agree with me? Let me know down in the comments, if you agree with me about Aaron Boone and about whether or not you'll be able to handle three more years of him. I'm just curious because when I think about it, whew, it's, it doesn't seem like a fun prospect. You know, what does seem like fun is bet online because bet online is back and better than ever with a new web interface for the start of the basketball season with more props, odds, and lines than ever before. Bet Online remains your number one spot for all the basketball and football action this season. Head to their new updated desktop or mobile website to sign up today and receive your 50% welcome bonus on your first deposit. Just use our promo code Locked On to receive that bonus. From basketball, football, baseball, postseason, although that's passed already, NHL, boxing, and UFC, right to your favorite Vegas casino games. Don't wait to take advantage of all the amazing offers available for the 2021 season. Bet online is the fastest and easiest way to bet on all your favorite sports. Bet online, where the game starts. Once again, thank you for making Locked On Yankees your first listen every day. We're free and available on every platform. There are lots of them. So now it's time for part two of my conversation with Lucas and Jen from Locked on Blue Jays. All right, we're back. Lucas Weiss, MLB analyst Jen Smith. This is the Locked on Blue Jays podcast crossover edition. We're joined by co-host of the Locked on Yankees podcast, Stacey Gonsulius. So Stacey, we talked about the 2021 Yankees season, of course. The offseason is upon us. There have been moves that have already been made, of course. Jose Barreos uh, signing a, a seven-year deal with the Toronto Blue Jays, among some other moves. Curious your thoughts on the Yankees' 2021 offseason and what moves you would like to see them make in terms of getting better for the 2022 season. Carlos Correa, <laughs> Matt Olson, <laughs> and possibly some sort of pitcher <laughs> just to shore up the rotation. I'm trying to think of who's even out there. Um, you know, I know that there were reports saying that at first they were saying the Yankees were going after Corey Seager. Then there was a report today that Hal Steinbrenner said something to the effect of that they'll just have a stopgap at shortstop and try for someone else later, which if that happens, I'm saying this on the show right now, 
I will probably do two weeks worth of shows yelling at Hal Steinbrenner and Brian Cashman. I'm not even joking. I can rant with the best of them. And I probably will if 2021's off season doesn't see a free agent signing and shortstop because earlier this month, Brian Cashman at the GM meeting said, this is the year of the shortstop. Well, if it's the year of the shortstop and you need a shortstop to make your defense better, you get Carlos Correa. You roll up the Brinks truck, open up the back of it, and just say, here, take what you want, come to us. You're the Yankees, pay the money. And I have to say, I'm happy for the Blue Jays giving Barrios that uh, deal because you want your team to spend money because you Mm. want your team to get better. And it annoys me that there are so many teams in baseball that don't do this, that these billionaire owners are hoarding their money and not putting a good product out there. So good for you guys. I hope that you uh, sign everyone you need to sign because you want the AL East to be competitive. You don't want just two teams fighting for first place. It was, I mean, it's as nerve wracking as it was for all of us. It was kind of fun to have that many teams involved in possible playoff spots. And, you know, you don't want to see teams like Baltimore putting out a horrible product and teams like the pirates that don't want to improve. And, you know, not everyone's the raise, not everyone can bring up these players and have them play really well without spending money. And I feel like so many teams are starting to try and do that. And I just, I just want the Yankees to be the evil empire that everyone claims that they are and just throw money at people like Scrooge McDuck, like just do it. It's so annoying. <laughs> So I agree. that's I mean, what I want. I want yeah, the Yankees to I make mean, people no, hate them I, again. No, I mean, it's interesting. And of course, Jen makes the point. I mean, it's it's not our money, right? I mean, that's, uh, you know, you right. want Jen's I say it all clothes. the time. Yeah. Yeah. So, so, so spend. I mean, and, me and certainly it's nice to see the Blue Jays have that trend more of willing to spend. I mean, Scott Boris famously a few years ago called it the blue flu and how the Blue Jays weren't willing to spend money. And, and now, of course... Uh, Toronto is more, more willing to do that. But Carlos Correa is an interesting one because I just think for me, you know, if you're the Yankees and, you know, you, you know, hopefully, you know, spend that money to get a guy like Correa. I mean, you're bringing a guy who's won, right? And he's been to the World Series three times. So he has that postseason experience, but he's just, he's just a gamer and, 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 and he knows how to play and he, he, he's just going to upgrade on that, in that position at shortstop. So I just think for Correa, for the Yankees, it, it feels like a perfect match. I don't know about you, Stacy. Well, I also love the fact that he's not afraid to speak his mind. I mean, sometimes it gets him in trouble, but I think the New York media would just love that so much yeah. because they're probably sick of all the canned answers that Aaron Judge gives out because he's kind of like Derek Jeter 2.0. He's so boring. And I think it would be so much fun for the Yankee media to have Carlos Correa come out and just tell every like tell it how how it is. Um But I feel like after Hal's comments today, um, I'm going to be very disappointed in the Yankees this offseason. I just, I can feel it in my gut. I don't know what they're going to do, but um, uh, yeah, Carlos Correa would be a really good fit. I I think he would relish being a Yankee because he, I, I think he would like being on another team where people boo them on the road and, you know, hate them and stuff like that. Cause he knows what it feels like. So I think it would be perfect. <laughs> yeah. He actually really would fit into that whole evil empire, you know, persona really, really well. So I could actually see that being an extremely good fit and being really, really fun. You said you were really glad that uh, the Yankees did not end up signing Justin Verlander, but they do need pitching. So who would you like to see them go after? Hmm. I don't even know. I'm trying to think of who's still out there. Um, I was just worried about Verlander coming off Tommy John and being his advanced age. And again, having so many innings on his arm, you know, they tried the same thing with Corey Kluber and, you know, he got injured right after his no hitter. The no hitter was a miracle. Can't even still can't even believe that happened. And I know it was against Texas who was no hit like two or three times this season, but the fact that that still happened was crazy. Um, I don't even know. Max Scherzer, Um, Max Scherzer from one uh, coast to the other. (laughs) Yeah. I mean, that would be something. Yeah. I was thinking about him earlier. Um, he's crazy. Like what, just watching how he, (laughs) 
he pitches <laughs> and how he reacts to be taken out and how he reacts to people touching him. It's just the funniest thing to watch. And I didn't, I don't know why I didn't realize this when he was on the Nets, but yeah, he was, uh, he's something that dude and just a gamer and, you know, doesn't want the ball to be taken away from him. And that's the kind of pitcher that you want. You want someone to, you know, we saw it with Cole when he pitched the complete game against Houston in uh, what was that before the all-star break, he was cursing and no, you're not taking me out. And he said, I have no idea what I said to them. I blacked out. I was just like, no, you're not taking me out of the game. <laughs> so you want kids like that, um, to be part of your uh, starting rotation. You know, the Yankees Tyone is working his way back. He'll be, he'll be able to um, start working out right at the beginning of spring training, but working out is in working out to get ready to pitch. So he probably won't be ready for opening day. If opening day starts on time and there isn't a lockout, um, you know, Severino, hopefully he stays healthy and works, uh, builds upon what he did at the end of the season. Um, but Max Scherzer as a Yankee could be interesting, but I'm always afraid of them signing guys who were older. Not that Max Scherzer is really old, but you know, it feels like the Yankees are always going after guys when their prime is about to fall off a cliff or it already has, you know, I have nightmares of like Randy Johnson and Jarrett Wright and all those guys from like 15, 16 years ago. And I'm afraid the Yankees are still going to do that sort of thing. So, I mean, we'll see, but yeah, they definitely have needs at first short. They need some pitching and oh, center field, because I don't trust Aaron Hicks as far as I can throw him because <laughs> he can't stay healthy either. So, you know, that's another issue so they do have a lot of needs um will they fulfill them and will they fix them remains to be seen but it all this stuff with all of our teams and all the moves you're going to see a flurry of them if they think the lockout's going to happen and yeah. that might be good for us in the short term but if the lockout happens what are we going to be talking about on these shows <laughs> if a lockout's <laughs> happening <laughs> well it's a very good question it's a very good question and it's interesting because i feel like the Yankees, Red Sox, and Blue Jays are in a similar boat because they're looking up to the Rays, who, of course, had 100 wins in 2021. The Blue Jays, you know, they're, they're nine wins back of that, right? The Yankees and Red Sox, they're eight wins back of that. So I think that's ultimately what you got to be thinking about, right? Like, I know for the Blue Jays, there's this, well, if we had one win and all this. Well, you have to think about trying to win the division because that makes your your life so much more easier and so much less stressful having you know you know foregoing the one game wild card and going then into into the division series so that's i think the challenge plus also the unique opportunity that the blue jays yankees and red sox have is because they have to make up these wins somehow to try to chase the tampa bay rays right Right. And they're the teams that are willing to spend money where the Rays aren't. <laughs> right. Because, <laughs> I mean, you know, the Rays have a winning formula for now. I mean, not winning as in winning titles, but winning as in winning divisions, getting into the playoffs. And, you know, the playoffs are a crapshoot. I mean, who thought, I know Trevor Plouffe predicted the Rays, uh, the Rays, the Braves winning the World Series. And actually, I think he predicted the actual World Series matchup in a fluke in March. Um, but, with the way the Braves started and uh, having to buy at the trade deadline because they had injuries, because they weren't doing well, because they were behind the Mets, and then they just go on this roll. It almost felt like the Nats in uh, 2019. It was the same sort of thing. Sure. Where, you know, even in July of 2019, you wouldn't have thought to yourself, oh, the Nats are going to win the World Series. <laughs> no. no. And, you know, Brian Cashman had said it. The playoffs really are a crapshoot. A lot of times, as long as you make it in and everyone starts at zero, anyone has a chance, no matter which team it is, if you won 106 games or if you barely won 90. And we saw it happen this year. So um, the key is to make the playoffs. I know it's better to win the division so you get into the division series and not have to do the one game playoff because that's, I don't recommend wild card games. I hate them so much. And we've been in too many of them recently and I just can't stand it. I only like them when they play Minnesota because at least you know you're, they're going to win. Um, <laughs> <laughs> but every other time, I'm just like, oh, God. Um, and I feel like, and I said this at the beginning of this season, I feel like the Jays are right there. And 
I said this to AJ. I said that I would be very happy for your fan base if you won in the near future. Even if you beat the Yankees to, you know, either win the division or you play in a wild card game, just to see your city finally, after nearly 30 years, win again, because I just want newer fans to experience that because it's so much fun experiencing your first world series as a cognizant adult or even like a teenager because i was 22 when the yankees won in 96. i don't remember 77 and 78 i was only three and four and so it was just the feeling is so great i want pirates fans to feel this i want jays fans to feel this I'm trying to think of who else baltimore hasn't won in you know ages and you know with that ownership who the hell knows what they're doing because um, <laughs> they seem to be content with not doing much which is frustrating because that's a good fan base of people watching baseball that beautiful baseball stadium and you want things to be good for everyone so i'm not one of those yankee fans who sits here and is like oh i don't know what the yankees are yes i want the yankees to win but if the yankees don't win i would like to see fan bases who haven't experienced it in a while experience it well that's uh well said and, and and for sure well hey the yankees have it once it's oh nine so i mean it's been uh true it, 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 it's been a long time but we don't have much time but i wanted to ask because the blue jays and the rays towards the end of the season had you know their sort of rivalry heat up with card gate blue jays red Sox, unfortunately didn't play in september just because of the schedules they couldn't really face off against each other in, in the home stretch. But the Blue Jays and Yankees, like we mentioned earlier, did face off in that cr critical series towards the end of the season, which the Yankees ended up winning. How would you sort of evaluate, I guess, the Blue Jays and Yankees rivalry going forward? Because I feel like with, with how that series ended, with the Yankees winning, the Blue Jays having that quote-unquote missed opportunity, I think it's going to fuel a bit of a rivalry now, Stacy, going forward in the years to come, just given how close the two teams are in the standings at the moment. Right. And how similar they are. Cause uh, we discussed this, discussed this at the beginning of the season. I said that they were similar teams where you would probably see them. Although I didn't uh, predict the Yankees offense to fall off a cliff, but I predicted that the Yankees and blue Jays would be very similar and finish close in the standings because that I just felt like their teams were very similar in how they were built and how they would, perform um i mean i think it's great you know um for the blue jays to be a rival again and you know because honestly i'm sick of the rays <laughs> definitely sick are. of the red Sox. <laughs> <laughs> i've been sick of the red Sox for a really long time it's not even the same kind of rivalry like even the wild card game i don't know it didn't feel the same to me at all um you know i sat through the late 90s early 2000s 2003 2004 all that stuff and um you know, I prefer the Yankees to have new rivals. And if it's going to be the Blue Jays, I think it'd be a hell of a lot of fun to watch. No doubt. I think we do too. Mm -hmm. I think it's going to be a lot of fun. Stacey Gatsuis, co-host of the Locked on Yankees podcast. Stacey, where can people find you on Twitter? I am at Stace Gotts, S-T-A-C-E-G-O-T-S, because my full name is too long for a handle and it just makes it easy for everyone. <laughs> and Locked on Yankees. All one word, no underscores or anything like that. <laughs> Amazing. And Jen, where can people find you on Twitter? So I, first, I just want to say really quickly that Stacy and I have been following each other for years on Twitter. So it was great to finally get to talk to them. So yeah. really, really happy to have, have you on. Uh, people can find me at baseball underscore Jen, and that is Jen with two N's. Amazing. Well so I hope you enjoyed that conversation. And yes, I do want the Blue Jays to succeed. If it happens against the Yankees, so be it. I mean, I won't be thrilled, you know, but I do feel that way. I feel that fan bases who haven't experienced a World Series in a while need to experience it because baseball will be better if, I don't know, I guess you share the wealth, not literally, but instead of having the same teams in the playoffs all the time, it's nice to see teams like, like when the Royals won in 2015, that was a nice surprise, although not that much because they played well in 2014, but it was nice to see them do well. They kind of fell off a little bit, 
But seeing teams that haven't won in a really long time is a fun thing. And I think that needs to happen more. So anyway, again, hope you enjoyed the conversation. That's it for this episode of Locked On Yankees, which is part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. I'd like to remind you that you can listen to the show in Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, Odyssey, Spotify, Stitcher, or anywhere else you get your podcasts. And you can watch and subscribe to us on YouTube. And when you get into your car, you can tell your smart device to play podcast Locked On Bets. Now make your second listen of the day, Locked on Bets, your daily one-stop shop for all your gambling needs. Locked on Bets, hosted by your boy Q, with expert analysis and insight from Lee Sterling. One more thing, if you could be so kind, please rate the podcast and spread the word about this podcast to your fellow Yankee fans. We would really appreciate it. Enjoy your Thursday, and Abby and I will talk to you tomorrow.